The story behind Glencoe Models is the story of a man's commitment to the hobby of plastic kit models at an affordable price for the casual builder. Glencoe Models is a kit model and plastics company in Worcester County, Massachusetts, and is run by Nick Argento. Named in honor of the Glencoe Valley in Scotland, where part of his family hails from, Nick is a lifelong model builder who is a graduate of Clark University. Nick started the company in 1987 with the goal of making fairly inexpensive kits for younger and more casual modelers. He wanted to appeal to the $10 modeler of the 80s and 90s. At the time, $20 was the usual budget for the average customer in a hobby store. A $10 kit along with a magazine and a few paints made the modeler very happy and stayed within that budget. One thing Glencoe did was to emphasize multiple decal options and great quality. You can build one of their kits in just a night or two and it looks great. And as Nick says, in some ways, we are selling fantasy. The first kits were released in 1987 and were the U.S. Marines and Japanese infantry plus some miscellaneous marks figures. In 1988, Glencoe released the X Lindbergh Spirit of St. Louis, an XV-1 convertiplane, and an approximately 148 scale Grumman Duck. The Duck is actually a bit closer to 152nd scale, which is why the cover art says approximately 148 scale. This is done because distributors are very wary about buying anything off scale. Later that fall came several former ITC molds, the MB2 Martin Bomber in 1 to 74 scale, and three Russian armored vehicles, the Frog 3 missile carrier, the BTR-50 armored personnel carrier, and the PT-76 reconnaissance vehicle. All of these are in 1 to 30 second scale. This was followed by the United States Coast Guard rescue boat, the World War I subchaser, and the USS Oregon. The USS Oregon won Kit of the Year at the Nuremberg Toy Fair in the 1950s. Next were Hawk's old Viscount airliner and Jupiter C rocket, as well as the former ITC Explorer 1 satellite and the 1 to 330 scale U.S. Navy blimp. Then came the former Ideal Company's Curtis Condor, Glencoe's original Albatross D3, the former Hawk Convair 880, and ITC's old 1 to 35 scale Brontosaurus skeleton followed by the Tyrannosaurus skeleton, the Stegosaurus skeleton, and so on. The de Havilland Venom was an ex-Lincoln mold, as was the Bristol Sycamore helicopter. It was an eclectic mix, but Glencoe was off and running. The D3 Albatross was actually Glencoe's own original mold. However, getting this mold made proved a painful experience. The molds were initially miscut, and dealing with the vendor's problems followed by legal issues made the cost and difficulty of doing this an experience Glencoe did not wish to repeat, especially given their business model. As a result, the Albatross is the only Glencoe original mold. That said, once fixed, the Albatross joined the Glencoe catalog along with six other reproduction kits in 1989. This included the old ITC Walker Bulldog tank and their first reproduction of an old Hawk kit, the aforementioned Vickers Viscount turboprop airliner. I should note that the Viscount kit, which I had and loved, scales out beautifully with an HO scale model train layout. The model M41 Walker Bulldog tank is unusual for several reasons, not the least of which is its large 1 to 15 scale. This old ITC kit is the only one that I could find in this scale and it goes well with 1 to 16 scaled radio controlled armored kits. It is set up to be able to be motorized and has a working suspension. Although considered a fairly basic kit from a detail standpoint, it is a solid basis for a self-made radio controlled tank, which can be detailed out to look quite good. Despite this, Nick points out that people were not happy with the M41 Bulldog tank. They were upset with the lack of quality and a lack of an interior. He states, I'm not sure what they wanted from a $29.98 115th scale tank, 
but I think they wanted a $250 quality kit. It was advertised as being RC convertible, and hundreds of people were upset when they saw that it did not have an RC unit in it. This was before the explosion of cheap RC toys we enjoy today. $29.98 was pretty inexpensive for that kit, even at the time. Later in the 1990s, Glencoe made a 1 to 160 scale model of the U.S. Capitol building. It was sold for four presidential elections, and oddly, the election years were the worst selling years for the White House and Capitol building. By the time Glencoe entered the market, kit models had lost much of their shelf space in general retail outlets and were pretty much restricted to big box stores like Walmart and Kmart or hobby and craft stores like Michaels and Hobby Lobby, as well as dedicated hobby shops. According to Nick, this was far more impactful than the competition from the exploding electronic game market. Despite this, the sales numbers were great until the mid-1990s. Besides hobby stores, each August, Glencoe was shipping an assortment of kits to mid-size box stores such as Ames, Bradley's, Rich's, and so on. But these retail chains are all gone now, and so are the sales. Glencoe went from 20,745 stores on the mailing list in 1987 to less than 3,000 in 2020. The industry went from 117 distributors in the hobby world, of which Glencoe sold to 67, to just a handful today. Despite this, Glencoe has managed to carve out a niche and continues making the old kits today, but lest you think using existing molds made profitability a foregone conclusion, think again. Some owners of the molds had unreasonable ideas as to what the value of the molds was, and striking a deal for a 30-year-old mold could occasionally be impossible. Then there was the condition of the molds plus the popularity of them. Once you have a mold of production, you have to sell it. Not every mold is a hit. Glencoe never tried to attract the rivet-counting perfectionist, but instead concentrated on the casual model builder. Their kits go together well and are good representations of the subject matter without having a huge number of tiny detail parts that no one's going to see. This is common with molds from the 50s and 60s and even many from the 70s. Many of their kits are nostalgia builds for a gentrifying population of model builders who made these kits when they were first run by their original manufacturers, companies such as Ring Toy Corporation, ITC, Hawk, Lindbergh, and Miniature Masterpieces and Adams, just to name a few. In the past, their catalog has sported cars, tanks, planes, ships, and predicted spacecraft. Many of their space vehicles are Von Braun designs that were made popular by the Walt Disney series Man in Space. Today Glencoe has a small but varied selection of kits ranging from aircraft and X-planes to real space to sci-fi as well as dinosaur skeletons, watercraft, wagons, chariots, and figures. But working with the older molds comes with its own specific problems. Nick states, the subjects are often more exciting and unique. In the older times they pick subjects beyond F-16s and Spitfires. I mean how many new molds of Tiger tanks and P-51s can the market sustain? Of course, that's mainly because the market is so small now in the U.S., and I doubt anyone would take a chance. In Russia and Ukraine, where modeling seems to be exploding, unique subjects are being made. The Eastern Bloc seems to be where it is today. The other reason is that tool and die making was an art then and not a CAD program. There's a style to each mold. I can sometimes open a tool, clean the preservative grease off of it, and see that this tool was made by the same guy who made Tool X that's on the rack. Some of the new tooling is incredible, but from my perspective as the person who discovers, fixes, and runs the tool, having that character is more interesting. However, Nick also states that this comes with some notable drawbacks. Some of the older tooling is worn out. Parts stick, embossing marks, etc. Some of the older tooling, as an operating tool, is horrible. The old Strombecker molds are the molds from hell. I cannot put an operator on them. I have to run them myself. Popular kits, but a real pain to run. Some of them I do upgrade. The Aurora World War I models had their embossed markings removed. Some of them had new engines, propellers, and guns, etc. It takes Nick about four hours to set up one of these older molds, 
and operating the machine requires an experienced and delicate touch to get proper injection, reduce flash, and manage cooling to prevent shrinkage. It's as much an art as a science. He likes to issue kits with multiple choices and whenever possible, multiple nationalities. The company is currently in the process of moving its operation to a better location, but is remaining in Worcester County and despite the current world situation, is managing to keep things going. Well, that's about all I have for Glencoe, and I want to give a special thanks to Nick Argento for taking time out of his busy day to help me with this video. So what's your Glencoe Models experience? I'm Max of Max's Models, and we'll see you next time. Far beyond this world I've known Far beyond my time What kind of world am I going to find? Will it be real or just all in my mind? What am I? Who am I? What will I be? Where am I going? And what will I see?